Welcome to Advantage. I'm Professor Gonzalez, and the topic today is multi-step income statement. We're gonna first talk about the purpose of the multi-step income statement. Remember that our main purpose is to make the reports useful to investors. So the multi-step income statement makes the income statement more useful. We do that by separating operating income or loss. This is the day-to-day -day operations of the company, the main purpose of the company. Then we have non-operating income and loss. Those two combined are continuing operations, and then we separate discontinued operations. Discontinued operations is talked about more in another video. The format of the multi-step income statement is if it we're working with a manufacturing or merchandising company, we have sales minus cost of goods sold to get to gross profit, and then all the operating expenses. It's very summarized, and this is the main format that you'll see for publicly traded companies. So we have selling expenses, which would include advertising and marketing and selling commissions, general administrative expenses, which would be your rent, utilities, etc. Research and development costs, so if you're researching a new product, those costs are expense when incurred. And then you have restructuring costs. Restructuring costs relate to if you maybe are moving your factory, maybe you are downsizing, those costs are also expense when incurred. Then gains and losses on disposal of plant assets. You've probably studied that already in your classes. When you are selling or disposing of a building or a piece of equipment, you may have a gain or loss. And then startup costs. When you're starting up your business, you're gonna have fees for getting your entity set up, any licensing fees. Those are all expense when incurred and in the operating section. So all of these costs listed are in the operating section of the income statement. The non-operating section then has interest revenue and interest expense. It also has gains and losses on sale of investments, and that would be like stock investments, debt investments. Those items are in the other because they're not part of the regular day-to-day -day operations of the company. Now we're going to go ahead and prepare a multi-step income statement utilizing Excel. Now we're going to prepare the multi-step income statement. What you're seeing here is a partial trial balance. It's partial because it has no assets, liabilities, or equity on it. It only has the accounts that we will use for an income statement. As always, at the top of the financial statement, we have the name of the company, name of the financial statement, and this is for a period of time. And we're going to start off with the sales revenue. As I use the numbers, I'm going to go ahead and highlight them so we know that we have used them. As you know, we only use an account once on the financial statement. So we have sales, then we have the cost of goods sold. And that gets us to gross profit. This is an important part of the financial statements because it allows the users to see how much profit we are getting off of the sale of the items that are being sold for mer that are merchandise. Not all companies will have that if they're not a merchandise company. Now we have operating expenses. We're going to put the header for operating expenses and then we're going to list the operating expenses. We should do a little indention to make it look nice. Starting with the selling expenses, we are going to summarize this. These financial statements are usually more summarized. So instead of listing the advertising and marketing and sales commissions separately, we will add those all together, adding all of those. And then the next is the general and administrative. And that will be the rent expense utilities expense, the salaries expense, and the payroll tax expense. There could be other expenses for any company. It just matters what expenses the company has that would fall under general administrative. Let me make sure I didn't grab interest. This interest is not part of operating. I'm going to now include the loss on the inventory write down. That one occurs when we adjust for lower of cost or market. So if market falls below cost, we would have a write down, which would be part of operating. Research and development is also required to be under operating. The next one is restructuring costs. I'm going to go ahead and just copy that on over. And let's see, what's the next one? Okay, depreciation expenses, the part of operating expenses. So remember, these are the day-to-day -day operations of the company, part of the regular selling and of the goods and services that the company sells, expenses related to those sales. Startup costs are required to be expensed and are under operating. 
And let's see, the two on the bottom also. So this impairment loss, this is related to a building that is still being used by the company. The market value has fallen below book value. And the loss on disposal, time to time, companies do sell their plant assets. And these would be put, the loss would be put into operating. Now we are done with the operating expenses. So we're going to total that up. And start on the non-operating. So the non-operating many times is called other income or expense. And we're going to have both in here. So since we're going to have both, we are going to include, when we bring in income or a gain, then it's going to be positive. If it's expense or loss, it will come in negative. The other is always interest revenue or interest expense. And it also includes loss or gain on investments, sale of investments. So we have some interest revenue. We have a gain on sale of investment. Let's see, we have interest expense. Now that interest expense needs to be negative because it is an expense. And then we have a total. Uh, now what we're going to calculate is income before taxes because the tax related to the continuing operations, which is what this would be, has to be separated from the tax from discontinued operations. So we're going to do income before taxes and we do that so that users can compare companies that are different types of entities such as C corporations versus an S corporation. S corporation would not have tax on the financial statement because it's a pass-through entity and so that we can compare companies uh, that are in different tax jurisdictions. So just looking at this line then allows us to compare those without taking into consideration income tax. Now we're going to put in income tax, we have expense. And now we're going to calculate income from continuing operations. Taking the income before taxes, subtracting the income tax from it. Now discontinued operations has to be separated and these are segments of a company that can be separated out and the company has strategically discontinued that segment of the company. We are required to report it net of tax, so separating the tax from the discontinued operation. On the trial balance it has already been netted. This is a loss, so bringing that in as negative. And now we've used all the items on the trial balance, the partial trial balance, and we will now calculate net income. Taking income from continuing operations, we are technically subtracting the loss from discontinued operations, and that gives us net income. So now this is a multi-step income statement. Separates out operating expenses from other, so the users of the financial statement can distinguish the two, and it separates out discontinued operations. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video.